Lab 4, Components and State. In this video, I'm going to go over how to complete this assignment, Lab 4, Components and State, and talk through its various instructions and requirements for this assignment. So let's start by looking at part one of the instructions. It says create a new React app in a folder named Lab 4. I'm going to create a new function component called Market Item. And create a new class component called Marco, Market. So over here in Visual Studio Code, I have it pulled up. My EIG 4503 Spring 2021 folder. And of course, I've opened a new terminal down here as well. So let's start by creating that new React project. So npx create hyphen React hyphen app space lab four, matching the exact requirements of the assignment. Lab four lowercase with no spaces. Press enter. And this will, in a few moments, go ahead and create a new React project in our lab four folder as part of this directory. So once that's finished, let's go back and look why that's working. We need to create a new function component and create a new class component. We'll go ahead and do these before we move on to part two. So we need a new function and new class. Now remember, remember when we're adding new components, we want to create a components folder. Then for each component, create a new folder for each one. Inside of those, create an index.js file. So we need to create a components folder once this finishes within the source directory, then within that components directory, create a new folder for each component that we're creating. So this is still running, but as soon as it finishes, we'll move on to the next steps. It's just about done, but moving over here to lab four, we'll go ahead and open this. Give it just a second to finish creating the rest of the files. And again, creating that components folder in the source directory and creating a new folder. There it goes for the last couple of things. Give it just a second to finish up. Doing some final, there it goes, lab four. Okay. Over here, SRC, the source directory. With it highlighted, I want to create a new folder called components, lowercase c, components. Okay. With components highlighted, I need to create two new folders, one folder, one folder per each new component I need. And with components highlighted, I'm up here to new folder. Mark it. With components highlighted, notice the little underscore right here. Create a new folder called market item. Then with market selected, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file called index.js. And with market item selected, I'm going to create a new file called index.js. So these are going to be the two new components we're creating, one of which needs to be a class component, one of which needs to be a function component each of which though will live in its own directory. So the verify then, this says market item should be a function component and market should be a class component. Well, that tells us a couple of things to start off here. So this is market item. So the name of the folder needs to match the name of the file or the name of the object or class we are exporting from it. So this needs to be a function component called market item. And we're probably going to deal with some properties at some point. So I'm going to go ahead and use props right here. Again, abbreviation for properties. And export. And again, we're only exporting one thing. So default or export default market item. Save this file. So for right now, that's all set up. When we were to market, we need market needs to be a class component. If market is a class component, it needs to extend react.component, which means we need to import react. So let's go ahead and handle that. Import React capital R from React lowercase r. This is a class component, so using the class keyword, mark it, extends React component. Open and closing curly brackets, and we're going to come in and we'll write more of it in just a second. This is going to export one thing, which will be this class we just wrote. Export default market. So coming back over here, then I have a new React app I created called Lab4, lowercase 
l a b no space to four the number created a new function component called market item create a new class component called market so i'm going to jump down a little bit to market item and then we can move back up into market so market item a function component should accept props which i've already added as a parameter for this function component and it said should render a division containing a single paragraph with the word item followed by the props count value such that each item will render item x where x is the current item it said not contain or use a state of any kind so let's go ahead and copy and paste this into market item just so we know what we're looking for so this says i'm going to go ahead and make this a comment and roll this over break this into a new line we have everything right here in front of us so okay this says render a division containing a single paragraph tag with the word item so this is a function component which needs means it needs to return something i'm going to return everything within our parentheses this is a division okay containing a single paragraph got that the word item oops i t e m there we go followed by the props dot count value such that each item will render item x so props dot count where x is the current number okay let's save this file so we are rendering that is returning a division division continue a single paragraph paragraph with the word item item followed by the props dot count value so props dot count so this will be whatever is passed as a property into this function component but will be an attribute somewhere else and it will render such that whatever we pass as count will show up as item x when this is rendered is whatever it returns okay so let's pause here double check steps props got it got a division containing a single paragraph with the word item followed by props that count double check props that count okay come back over here not contain or use state of any kind. Well, we don't have anything else in here, so it's not doing that as well. The market item is done. Move up to market, which is the more complicated of the two. So keep an internal state object. Pause right here and talk about why this is important and what else it requires. So over in market, we were told something important. It's using state. So think to state. In the metaphor the vending machine the vending machine has three steps the initial value that is we put some type of value in we put some type of coin in the initial value we do an interaction of some kind and then we do an effect of some kind so the three different steps the initial value the interaction and the effect so if we have an initial value that means we need to set a property because this is a class set a property somewhere if we're constructing a property we need to do it as part of the constructor where everything is built it constructs use the constructor anytime we're constructing something probably want to use the constructor method we're using the constructor method here goes constructor you need to pass props right here just like we're doing everywhere else and then we need to call super right here props and this just sets everything up. So we have the constructor for market passed in props. And then we have the constructor for react a component and we're passing in props. Well, it just means anything we get as properties, which are converted between the element and attribute form into this, we will then have. So again, we're constructing a property as we will with state. And we're doing it as part of the constructor method. Where whenever we're constructing something, we're doing it as part of the constructor. So this dot state then and open and closing curly brackets pause here and come back this says object keep an internal state object just like this said class component and this says function component in parentheses object so so far so good okay use an internal property of its state object called items which should be an array so let's go ahead and take care of that next so we have open and closing curly brackets 
And then inside this, as a property of this, is items, which should be an array. So I'm going to use open and closing square brackets to set this up as an empty array. So, so far, so good. Got a state, which means we need to use the constructor. As an internal property of its state called items. So, so far, so good. Matching this. I'm going to go ahead and save this file. Coming back over here, it says, okay, now we need to import market items. So let's do that next. So imports go at the top. We need to import market item. The market item from. Now, market and market item are each in different folders. So the relationship between the two is that they are both in the components folder. So if I'm an in index.js that is inside the market folder, I need to move up the components folder and then go down into the market item folder to get it. In which case, the relative path that if dot slash would be the same directory. Instead, I want to go up one. So dot dot slash and select market item. Because market item has an index.js file then I can automatically import from that folder. So we could just point it to the folder and React will take care of the rest of it for us. Save this right now. Okay, coming back over here, importing market item, done. Okay, moving on. A couple of different things going on here. Allows you, allow a user to click a button using the on click event, it should. Then we've got some more stuff. But let's go ahead and take care of the first thing first. Allow our user to click a button. So that means we need a button. If we need a button, we also, as we remember, every class component has to render something, just like function components have to return something, class components have to render. So let's go ahead and add the render method right here. And then we need to return something. So just like I had in the function component, let's go ahead and put all of our JSX inside open and closing parentheses just to better organize it. And okay. We need a button. So let's go ahead and add one. We've got a button. Okay, so far. Should use the on click event. So on click events in React are associated with their named attributes. So if we want the click event, we want the on click attribute. So let's go ahead and just give the button something. Say click me. So we have some type of instruction. This is on click will be equal to something. Come back to in just a second. Okay, so so far we have a button. We're using the on click event, which is associated with the on click attribute. Okay. This says it should add a new market item component to the state items. So let's do that next. So we need to add new things to an array. When we're working with arrays, we can add to them using its methods. The method we want to add to this would be push. Push adds to the end of an array. So we want a couple of different things to be going on here, in which case we need to go ahead and add an arrow function here. And then we're going to do a few different things here. Coming back to this idea of working with state in the vending machine, we set up an initial value, which is this right here. Then we're about to do an interaction, which I'm about to write right here, that's going to produce an effect, that three steps. So anytime I'm working with state in both function components and class components, there are three general steps that we want to do, uh, patterns we want to get into. First of which is we want to make a copy of whatever we're about to change. We want to change it, and then we want to update state. So let's go ahead and make a copy of what I'm about to change. Items equals this that state at items. I want to change the items property of the this dot state object. So this dot state is the object. Items is its property. Items remembering is an array. Then I want to change the copy I just made. Items push. Then finally, I want to update state. So when we update state within a class component, we need to use its existing method called setState. The reason why we use this is because when we call 
set state, not only will it change this dot state internally, it will also call render again, meaning it will update any display of the information or data we're using. So we need this dot set state. And we need to set state using an object and set its items property to our updated items. So our three steps, make a copy, update the copy, update the state. So we've got our copy of the property right here. That's in, right here. And then we're coming down here and doing this. So over here, it said, add a new market item component to the state items. So we're going to add a new market item as its element form. The market item right here in its element form. So we're adding a new element to the array, and then we're updating the state. So making a copy of the property, changing the property, updating the state. Okay. And this says when adding a new market item component, pass it the current number of entries in state that items as attributes named count and key. So this is an important line right here when adding a new market item component. So we're adding previous right here, add a new one. When we're doing this, Pass it the current number of entries and state that items attributes named count and key. As we remember, since we worked on market item first, it will have right here something called props.count. This is a property, but up here it's an attribute, which means we're working with its element form, elements and attributes to objects and properties. So coming over here, then this says this should be count is equal to something as an attribute and a key is equal to something. In the instructions, it says the current number of entries in state that items. State that items is an array. So when we're dealing with arrays, we need to be aware of its common properties and methods. So right here, we're using push. And if I put the cursor over it, it says method appends new elements to an array and returns a new length of the array. The length part of that is important. All arrays have a property called length, which contains the current number of entries in the array. So we can use then items that length right here and right here. And notice put cursor over here gets or sets the length of the array. This is the number. This is a number one higher than the highest element defined in an array, which is to say whatever number is in it, this will always be equal to the current total and is a property of array. So we made a copy right here of items. We're now using that copy for length and length. So the first time we run this, it will be count zero key equals zero. The second time it will be one and one and time two and two and et cetera. So we've got here, double check length. Is the current number of entries in, and this will always be the number of current entries as we do it. So far, so good. Okay. Now let's move down to this line. So this is still part of market. Market should show a listing of all current entries and state that items using the map method of array returning the current element in the array. Okay. So let's save this file. So now every time we click on the button, it's going to add a new market item. And when it adds the new market item in the element form, it's going to over here pass this count and key. Right now we're not doing anything with key, but we are doing something with count. So props.count, the property form over here, element form over here. And the final instruction of this said show a listing of all current entries. So let's go ahead and work on that. So we've got our button, which is right here, but we need to add something else, a additional element or additional something to show this information. We need to remember the three key rules of JSX, JavaScript XML. There is one root element, all elements must close and JavaScript expressions. Only JavaScript expressions are allowed, which is basically values. So if we're going to show some extra information, we probably want an additional element or at least one additional element, if not more. If we do, then we've got to abide by the first rule of JSX, one root element. We've got a button, 
which we currently have one root element. There's just one element. If we're going to add any other elements. We need a parent element. So let's go ahead and add a division. Here. I'm going to cut and paste this right here. I'm just going to tab this over so the spacing looks correct. We've got our root element division, and now we can add any new children elements we want because we will always abide by that first rule of JSX, one root element. So let's go ahead and add a division here, which we'll safely add because we've got that parent element. Now I want to add an expression, or that is, I want to add something that produces a value. I'm going to use open and closing curly brackets right here. I'm going to go ahead and press enter to give myself some space, just so the code is a little cleaner looking. And now I need to use what this mentioned right here, map, the map, the method of array. So let's go ahead and open this in a new tab to look at this. The map method creates a new array populated with the results of calling a provided function on every element in the calling array. Okay. So what map will allow us to do is visit every single entry in an array and then do something with it. So, okay. And we see over here, example uses a function and we see down here and its syntax uses a callback function. The function that is called for every element of array, each time callback executes the value, turn value is added to new array. Callback function accepts the following arguments, current value, index, array is optional, and this argument is all optional. The third thing we care about there is current value. What we want to do is move through an array one by one by one by one entry. And for each entry in the array, we just want to, in this case, display whatever is in it. So we want this state at items, the array, and its method, map. Okay, map accepts a function. There are two different possibilities we could use here for functions. We could either use a function using the keyword function or use a function using an arrow function, both of which are functions and both of which are possible here. Let's go ahead and use an arrow function. So I'm going to call this element and I'm going to do an arrow function. But this may look weird because it doesn't have open and closing parentheses around its parameters right here for the element, but for the arrow function. For arrow functions, they point from their parameters to their body of their function. In the cases where there is a single parameter in an arrow function, and this is a very specific use case, if it only has a single parameter, that is, it doesn't have anything else and it's open and closed parentheses, it doesn't have to have the open and closed parentheses. I can, if I want, use open and closing curly brackets, or I don't want to do that, and there's only going to be a single line right here, a single parameter and now a single line inside this arrow function. Then what I could do, say return element. That's it. And it's say return here. It says, oh, nope, you actually need the curly brackets. So let's go ahead and add those in. And all we're going to do is return this. And notice I don't use a semicolon within part of this. The reason why I don't is because we're still within JSX. Notice this is still JSX, and this is just something that's going to produce some type of value. So I'm going to say, okay, for whatever is in here, and we know each entry in this array is actually an element right here. So for every element, just return whatever this element is, which is to say, for everything in here, show the market item with its count and key, which internally means over here, it will go item and pass the element and attribute form to the object and property form. Okay, let's save this. We've got our this.state.items.map, and we're using the special form of the arrow function. It's got a single parameter. Notice I put the cursor over it in parentheses parameter. It's got a single parameter and points to returning element. So it looks like I'm mostly done, but let's double check. What's the last thing I need to do? Okay, coming down here to app, it says either a function or class component should not contain its default content, import the market component, return or render only the market component. 
let's come over here to app.js, take out all of its default content, but take out its imports. And it said to import market. Market, where is market? Market is in the relative path dot slash. App.js is in the same directory as components. So dot slash components slash market. Okay. And I just need to return or render market. So market here. Okay. Check. Should not contain its default content. I removed it. Should import the market component, what it's doing, and should return or render only the market component. Turn the market component, not contain its default content, and doesn't do anything else. So I'm going to save this file. Okay. I think my code is mostly done and I want to now test it. So I'm going to test my code. I need to verify that I'm in the right directory. But down here, I'm in the spring 2021 directory. I need to move to the lab four directory. So I want to change directory CD space lab four right here. Now that I'm in the lab four directory, I want to run NPM run start. We'll run the start script in the React project. We give this just a second, and then in my default web browser, which is Google Chrome, it will open the project. If everything's run correctly, we should see a button. Give everything just a second, and now we see the button. Come back to Visual Studio Code. It compiled successfully. That's a very good sign. What we want is to be able to click the button, the item zero. And I'm one, two, and I'm three, and I'm four, and I'm five. And every time we click it, we get a new item. So let's go back through everything again. We created a new React app called Lab4, lowercase lab, no space, number four. Created a new function component called market item. Created a new class component called market. Market a class component. Kept an internal state, which was an object. Within that object had a property called items, which was an array. Then we imported market item. We allowed our user to click on a button using the on click event. Anytime we use an event within React, we're using the equivalent attribute. So the on click attribute, lowercase o, uppercase c. We're adding a new market item component to the state.items using its method push. Then whenever we're adding, we're passing the current number of entries, so items.length to market item as count and key. And then we're showing what all of our current items are still within market using the map method of array, returning the current entries. So we saw over here in market, we're setting up state, again, coming back to the vending machine. We've got an interaction right here. And as part of the interaction, it's producing an effect. That is, it is changing part of the state. And we use the set state method as part of react component, knowing it will call the render method again and re-render everything. So that means we're not only updating it, but we're showing that change. Then finally, in market item, we accepted prompts. We rendered a division containing a paragraph with the word item followed by props.count. We're here in market item, props.count. Count is a property over here in market item. It exists as an attribute over here when we are using the element form. So React is converting between elements and attributes to objects and properties. Then over here, finally in app, we are importing market component and just returning or rendering it here. And so finally, we have an interactive example using function components class components and in the class component using its internal state with the use of the set state method to push a new element. Remembering of course that React is converting between elements and attributes to objects and properties internally. And we can just simply store the JSX right here, knowing React internally is doing all the sort of complicated parsing for us. And then we can just show it down here. And this will allow us to allow the elements to store the counts or what they are. And all we need to do is pass the information to them 
it will quote unquote store it within the element form. And then we can just show it through use of the map method of arrays. A series of complicated steps, but helps us see here how we can create an internal state, show the status of the state, and then add things to an internal array as part of the state of a class component. Creating an interactive, but somewhat simple, web application where we click a button, new things are added, all of which use state internally and work with two different types of component, function, and 